Hello there YouTube, my name is Trogi and today I'm very proud, or pleased I should say, uh, today to bring you some Battlefield 3, playing some Conquest on Golf of Oman as you can see. And today I'm bringing you my impressions of, whatever you want to call it, the big patch, the long awaited patch, THE patch, for Battlefield 3 to literally, and I kid you not, make it a brand new game, I'm not joking. Today I'm going to be talking about my impressions of the patch. I've had a couple of games with it now, uh, going to be talking through what I think of it in general really in terms of uh, what I think of it, what I think is good, what I think is bad, because obviously seeing a massive change list uh, it all looks good in practice but it's actually when you see the thing in action which you can really give it a good opinion of how you think the changes have worked. So I'll be talking through that, talking through a load of the new features which are added and you'll be seeing those as, as the game goes on and well just in general, talking Battlefield, and um, yeah, well, I'll, we'll see where it goes. Anyway, to talk about the gameplay, what you're seeing here is, I think, my third or fourth game post-patch. Gulf of Oman, Colon Quest, as I've said, and today you're going to see me helicoptering, mainly. Um, I haven't uploaded like a big helicopter-only game, well, it's not helicopter-only, but uh, helicopter-heavy gameplay in a little while, so I thought I'd bring you this. And I won't lie, this was by far and away the best game of Battlefield probably, yeah, in Battlefield I have ever played in terms of score, in terms of what was going on. I was very, very happy with my performance in this game. So hopefully the gameplay will be interesting. But really, I want to talk about the patch. Obviously, we've waited for it for an awfully long time. The last patch we got on console, I think, was just before Back to Carcandra's release, so that's December. We've had nothing since then. That's a mighty long time uh, for a patch. Uh, to come out. Obviously the PC guys luckily have had a few more patches because obviously they don't have uh, as much certification to go through unlike the consoles but um, finally we have something. Uh, the PS3, you can go down, uh, uh, go onto the PS3, download it straight away. It's a gigabyte in size and, uh, and, and get going from there. Has to be said though that if you have the Back to Karkand DLC, at least on PS3 anyway, you have to re-download the actual DLC to uh, as well, Back to Karkand DLC, uh, to play those maps again. But um, the whole whole procedure, a couple of gig, it took me a little while to do. I expect it'll take you a little while to download, especially uh, well, especially now since everyone's trying to grab the patch. I've seen uh, some poor guys posting five six hours to download this gigabyte worth of data, and then they'll probably have to find they have to download Karkand as well. A bit of a pain, but seriously guys, it's well worth it. Um, I've kind of hinted to it, I guess, a little bit, but the patch is a great leveller. Seriously, it's like Battlefield has changed into a completely different game. And uh, before the patch, I played roughly, I don't know, about 200 hours. And I'm basically telling myself, right, I've got to bin everything that I knew about the weapons, the way to play Battlefield 3 as a Battlefield game. The whole dynamic and everything has changed, so let's talk through why it's changed, what has changed. Well, basically there isn't much which hasn't been changed. The game modes and things are all the same, but the weapons themselves, the thing which obviously make this a first person shooter, have all seen some form of change. Now the biggest one by far is the attachments which you'll put on those weapons. So previously, uh, or at least this as far as I'm aware, the, the attachments, the foregrip, the laser, the, the sights, they were uniform across all the weapons. So say uh, a particular sight gave you plus five accuracy, let's just say a generic number, it'll be plus five accuracy across all weapons. Well, that isn't the case anymore. The uh, attachments are now, I don't know, modified, tuned per weapon. So what you may have found worked very nicely for you pre-patch, now all might be terrible, for all we know. On top of that, the weapons themselves have all had a uh, or had some work done to them. As I get a bit lucky there, I think I just touched the ground there with the, uh, the skid. A little bit too cocky there, but anyway. Anyway, the weapons, they've all been tweaked in one form or another. I think there are only two weapons which haven't been touched, and I think that's the M16 and the 870 MCS shotgun. Everything else has had some form of buff or nerf. Of course, the USAS 12 frag and the sledgehammer frag combos uh, probably are the, uh, the two changes which most people have been waiting for. I have been killed a few times by um, USAS 12 frags, but it's nowhere near as quick and it's quite easy to see that the guy with the USAS is having to do a lot more work. I can recall when I've picked up USAS fragged uh, kits, but basically you just held down the button in the general direction and everything would die. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore, so that's good. Any deterrent is a good deterrent to, to that particular setup. Uh, the weapon itself, the ammunition really itself, uh, previously was not overpowered, it was the combination which made it a pain. 
and uh, well, I'm pleased to report certainly the, the kills, or, my, or I should say my deaths by USS Frag so far have been legitimate, I would call them legitimate, so uh, so good news there, um, very happy with, with that tweak anyway. Uh, so yeah, the weapons have completely changed. I kid you not, I'm having to reevaluate my weapons, and unfortunately, it's the weapons which I really didn't want to change. The snipers, which have really—they seem to have taken on a whole new dimension. Now, for those of you who've watched plenty of my videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of the L96. That weapon has, has undergone a lot of change. I don't know; it doesn't feel the same anymore. It feels like the bullets got quicker. In fact, the whole. I don't know, the whole way that the weapon looks when you're running around with it, it just looks different. It looks like the field of view's got a bit wider. Um, they have fixed a few things on the L96. For example, the straight pull bolt didn't function properly. You had to uh, manually cycle it uh, while zoomed in to get that to work, but that's fixed now, so that's good. But yeah, the L96, it seems to have changed. The bullet seems to have got faster. It does more damage now at close range, and you can one-shot kill, although I haven't uh, had an opportunity to do that yet. Uh, but that is an option now, uh, which, is, which is nice. A uh, bit of variety never hurts. Um, but yeah, all the weapons have changed, and basically, the long and short of it is, you're going to have to sit down and have a jolly good go trying to figure out what works for you again, and what doesn't. Um, it's... A, well, as I've said, it's a great lever. It's like it's a different game, uh, and with the uh, changes to the server, in fact, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, so uh, uh, the servers, uh, uh, servers servers, have all gone through a few tweaks in terms of new new software running on them, new map rotations, new map options. Again, just those those changes right there have, have spiced up the game a bit, made it fresh. Uh, you know, jumping from conquest to rush and moving things around. That's great. Um, you know, something a little bit different. Certainly, you know, when I've, I've you know, gone into the quick uh, quick game, gone, I just want to play some conquest, please, and I get put in a, a rush game the next round, I kind of go, oh, god damn. But still, it's it's there, and uh, basically, really, if you just want to play conquest or you just want to play rush, you're going to have to use the server browser. But those servers still are available, you just got to find them. Um, normally, they're just listed as server, there's no EA or dice tags uh, on them. Speaking of servers, consoles can finally have their own custom rented servers and uh, what I'll do is I'll cut to a little bit of, of footage here of me browsing through the menus. So first of all actually I should mention that there is now a matches option which has been added. Uh, essentially I guess for the eSports or the uh, competitive scene there's now a dedicated uh, pane window setting, I don't know, to manage your games, manage what's going to happen, the time, the place, the server, the lot, what you'll be playing, uh, so you've got a dedicated screen there, that's very nice, and on top of that, you actually have the options to buy the server yourself. Now, personally, having a look at the pricing, it's a little dear, as I need to get hit by a bit of F-35, <laughs> that was a bit close. Um, the, the, the pricing for me, it's a little dear. Uh, I think the, the rates for one in seven days are reasonable. Um, it's uh, £1.19, I believe, for one day and about £5 for a week. But for uh, 90 days, it's almost £50, which is a bit dear. If it was closer to 30 35 I would seriously consider it. Um, but yeah, the pricing, for me, a little steep. We'll, we'll see what happens. But basically, a number of you were asking uh, if I was going to rent my own server. Possibly, maybe for a day or two, but I don't. I, I just don't have the money for for 90 days. Um, but having said that, the actual server customization, my word. Um, what I'll do is I'll link to a video I uh, saw linked uh, from Reddit. And my goodness me, if it's exactly like the PC, basically, if you can think of the option, it's there to customize. So you know you can have your 500% ticket servers, so 1500 ticket servers if you like. Uh, if the ticket's count is 300, for example. This server, and as a matter of fact, uh, I think it was 230 for the Russians, 200 previously. As you'll notice, we still got 275 tickets and 245 tickets. This was a long game. Um, a great game, though. And actually, what I, I, I should also say is that the weapon balance, because everything's gone out of, of kilt, well, no, kilt is the wrong word, but because everything's been tweaked a bit, what I've found is that you've really got to think about where you engage people again in terms of if you're engaging to mid to long range an assault rifle or a carbine will win out there have been times where I've perhaps been able to get lucky with I don't know say a UMP or an, a, a VAL an AS VAL, not anymore um, you will be hammered into the ground so keep an eye on those weapon choices and again it's like a whole new game which personally well two things, firstly it's kind of like great, okay, fresh, new, exciting um, but also at the same time I kind of go Damn, I was quite enjoying this. 
Now, another thing to mention, actually, um, is a few changes. I'm not really sure if you can tell from here to the user interface and the colors of the game, let's say. So, uh, the user interface has gone through a few tweaks. Um, although you don't see it uh, in this particular game, but the, the way you can select weapons um, in-game has changed. There's, uh, in fact, I might cut in a, a clip which I got uh, uh, in a previous game uh, uh, of the new UI there. Um, actually, when you're customizing your soldier, again, I'll cut to a clip here. Um, when you're customizing your soldier, uh, you now have an option to customize for Russian and US sides. So instead of one for all and you've got to uh, change uh, some weapons around, there's options for both now, which is nice. And, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the colours. Now, I'm not sure, but on most, or some of the maps, everything, everything seems to have become a little more orange. And what I mean by that is I think they've taken away quite a bit of the, if you're blue, tint, which there was in Battlefield. So I was playing on Caspian Border, and it seems significantly warmer in the colours and that kind of thing. And I was kind of like, this is nice, this is different. Uh, obviously, Battlefield uh, 3 has had quite a lot of blue, uh, blue tint and things, so... <laughs> I think a little bit of an artistic change there, but uh, welcome, very welcome, I, I will not deny that. And, um, so yeah, the, the colours, the UI has been changed a little bit, I'm not sure if you can see, but um, the the flags are now pretty clearly labelled on the map, so for example, if you look on the, on the mini-map there, you'll see it's labelled as C, you can see that the flag, the way that they flash up has changed as well, uh, which is nice. You still get, uh, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but if a flag disappears, you still hear, we have neutralised the objective. That's all well and good, but that might be a neutralization for the enemy, not for us, so that, that can lead you off. That hasn't changed, but they, when they actually flash, they are flashing. There was sometimes an issue where they would continue to flash, uh, which, you know, you couldn't tell if that was an actual attempt on a capture or just a glitch. That seems to be fixed, which is nice. Um, and, well, let's talk about the vehicle since I'm engaging a tank here. So the tanks have been, or what it feels like anyway, radically changed. They feel like they can take a lot more of a battering, but the actual engagements will basically last a, uh, or last a lot less. So as you saw there, I fired two rockets, or I think two rockets, into the side of that tank, and they're having to get out and repair it because the thing's in trouble. Um, previously, I think you need a few more than that, so it seems to the, the rockets and things do more damage. And head-on tank fights now, you've really got to have an engineer repairing you or else you're in trouble. Um, none of this fire your 120, lock on with the guided fire your 120 again stuff, you'll be dead in that time. You've got to be really hot and on it uh, in tank battles now. Even with reactive armor, um, they've become quite a lot more challenging again. Uh, and actually, speaking of the engineer, um, the repair tool. Now, uh, I think it does a little more repairing, but it doesn't last as long. So one thing you were able to get away with uh, pre-patch is that you were able to sit down uh, have your tank engage someone and sit behind it and repair it, and you'd repair it faster than the enemy could damage it. So normally if that were the case, the other guy stood no chance at all. Kind of sucky. But, um, uh, but no more. No more. Uh, they, they can't sit behind the vehicle and do that for too long, which, which is nice. Gives the, the other guy a bit of a chance. But again, as I've said, the, the vehicle warfare dynamics have significantly changed. So again, something to keep an eye on. In general, I guess to... to sum up the patch, there's a load of stuff I haven't talked about, um, purely because either it's little stuff, well as the old saying, you know, the devil's in the details, the little stuff which you don't notice, or um, no, I just haven't had a chance to see it, in fact, actually I just fell out that window and didn't take as nearly as much damage as you would have done before, I still took some, but, uh, you know, of, uh, I don't know, 5-6 meter drop you take 60% damage or something daft like that, it's more like 25, which I think is fair, anyway. Uh, digression aside, the, the changes and things which have, have gone on, I think, have definitely enhanced the game, and to put it in the sentence, I love what it's done to the game. As I've said, it's completely reinvigorated the way the game plays out, the way it... Well, just the way in general it plays, and I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't see that as an issue at all. There, ah, another thing to mention, if you notice the out of area, I just noticed that the uh, out of bounds area has now been shaded orange instead of grey to make it a little bit clearer. Anyway, I digress. My point was that basically, because this patch has changed so much, both in the things you notice and you don't, the, you know, just the way it's gone about it, Battlefield 3 feels fresh, it feels new. It feels like a brand new game in short, but it's still got those, I don't know, Battlefield... 
jeans? I don't know. You can tell it's a Battlefield game. In fact, thinking of it, I'm, I'm talking in, in terms just like when Battlefield 3 came out. You could tell it was a Battlefield game, but you could tell it was a new type of Battlefield game, just in the way it plays out. And basically the patch feels exactly the same. I mean, for example, you're seeing me in a helicopter again now, and um, essentially the helicopter combat and vehicle combat, air vehicle combat, has completely changed again. So if you recall when Battlefield 3 came out, there was a bit of an uproar because if you were a pilot and you didn't have the countermeasures unlocked, you didn't stand much of a chance of staying in the air. Essentially, you know, guys with stingers and iglers and other aircraft would shoot you down before you got a chance to get your flares. And it was a very, very tricky task to actually go around unlocking stuff for the, for the air vehicles. Result, people complained. They weren't happy about that process. And the stingers and iglers in particular, rubber tree, uh, <laughs> They, they, they were nerfed in the subsequent patch, and personally I think that was a really bad move. It made flying a helicopter, flying a jet, way too easy. That isn't the case anymore. What DICE have done very cleverly for the air combat, and actually, just listen to this, this is a little bit of a fail, but listen. Clawing, I could have sworn that damn crane was about to come down on my head. <laughs> bit of a fail there, that's, that's the only, I think, uh, contact you see me make with, with the ground now, anyway. I digress. Uh, anyway, I was like, oh yeah, the Stingers and the Eaglers. Um, basically, the helicopters and jets, they were indestructible. Indestructible? Indestructible. Uh, against the um, anti-air, uh, or, or, you know, anti-air couldn't do a thing to them. Just in the way the fact that the anti-air took so long to lock on, they didn't do that much damage anymore, they were pointless. So what was the point in using them? None, in short. Uh, not good, not good at all. And, um, well... That kind of made the aircraft rule the sky, and there wasn't much you can do about it. And as I've talked about in my Battlefield Wind series, about how to play with various kits and vehicles, the, the fight in the air is valuable, for sure. If, if the ground battle isn't going your way, the air vehicles can turn it. But if you hold the ground and the air and you can't do anything about the air, you are done. Because the air aircraft can attack your, your ground units before the, ground, the enemy ground units get a chance. So... The, the Stingers and the Iglers, what's happening now with them is, it's a 2-3 to three second lock-on, but it's more of an area of denial weapon, in terms of the Stingers and the Iglers don't go very far, they're very quick to lock on, so essentially say I was flying over the, the sea flag there, there was a guy with a Stinger and Igler, I would get locked on very quickly, the Stinger would come after me, I could flare it, but basically, they wouldn't be able to lock onto me for, for more than, I don't know, 100-200 metres? I have the opportunity to run away, and they keep me out of their area, which is exactly what mobile anti-air units do uh, in reality. So I think that's a very nice compromise. You up the damage, it means that if you are hit by a stinger or a niggler, you're in trouble, uh, in short, and it also means that uh, the, the stinger and the igler guys um, have an opportunity to, to take back the air, which I, I, I have no problem with whatsoever. It brings back a little bit more challenge. And in fact, another thing to mention about the uh, helicopters is the fact that you can now flare laser-designated uh, laser designated targets. Now, I'm not sure if you remember, but earlier in this gameplay, when I was in a helicopter previously, I was hit by a javelin. I think I'm right in saying that all, all ground missiles, so your s'mores, your RPGs, your javelins, uh, and, well, in fact, the tank shells as well now are all one-shot kills to, to aircraft. But uh, that still hit me, even though I flared. I'm still a little curious to how that happened. I don't know if it was just too close and the flare couldn't take effect or what, um, but there's still an opportunity, a window of an opportunity there to take down aircraft by laser-guided weaponry. There's a little bit of an outcry uh, because essentially flares would shake off laser-designated missiles, so your guided shells from tanks, your javelins, with the use of a soul flam, and that was actually pretty much the only way you could get aircraft out of the sky uh, without, uh, without using other aircraft. Uh, so, there was a bit of an outcry, and I don't know if that was just a one-off case, but it seems like they can still take down vehicles, or air vehicles, uh, when they flare. So, I, th that's fine, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, personally, I didn't like the idea of being able to flare laser-guided missiles, it's a different lock-on system, but I digress, I could go into that for, for a whole video, but never mind. Essentially, guys, the patch, as I've said, it completely reinvigorates... Yeah remakes the game. It's like a brand new game. My, my grasp of my English language here is failing me, but the whole game, it feels fresh, it feels new, it feels great. And yeah, it's taken three odd months to get here, but to be honest, i much rather wait for a well-made, happily put together, I don't know, patch, uh, than get loads of little mini-updates. 
unfortunately this patch isn't all that. <laughs> so unfortunately there are a few issues with the patch and um, it's well, uh, well, it's pr being reported quite a lot more uh, as I record this commentary. This is well seven o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, the 27th of March, I should say, so the day of the, the, the patch coming out. So I grabbed it, or grabbed the patch, about 11 o'clock, I think, uh, and played a game. It was good, but then my console froze at the end of the game. I was kind of like, that's strange. Uh, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. Uh, so I thought, oh no, probably a one-off or something, you know. Just download the patch, might be, might be a factor, who knows. I, I kind of ignore it, I restart the game, I, I go in again, does it again. Kind of like, hmm, okay, this is very odd. Battlefield wasn't doing this before, surely it's got to be something to do with a patch. And, uh, well, I tweeted at the community managers and said, have you, you know, know about this, any ideas, didn't get a response, didn't expect one. Uh, but still, it was very, very curious. So I went to Battlelog and sure enough, other guys are reporting this strange issue with the game freezing and locking up. And it's frankly a game-breaking bug. Not gonna lie, it's not a good one. So essentially, and this is something to be very aware of, I don't know if this will affect uh, PC and Xbox 360 Battlefield players as well when it comes out, or if it's just a PS3 issue, but essentially if you're in Alpha Squad, Alpha Squad, at some point randomly during the game, all players from Alpha Squad will be booted, and you will see at the end of this game exactly what I mean. Um, it is an incredibly bizarre glitch, or bug, whatever it may be. It's something very unusual indeed, and it basically means that a third of the team, or hell, even uh, yeah, a third of the room basically, will get booted at some point every game, which obviously isn't that good or, or, or very useful indeed. Um, so a very, very strange bug, and game-breaking, absolutely game-breaking. You're there, you're having a great game, and boom, gone, locked up. And in fact, what I'll do now is I'm cutting one, uh, a little video clip of just what happens where I was in Alpha Squad, playing quite happily, enjoying, you know, I think I was rolling around in the tank and it got destroyed and it gone. Um, not good, not good. Now, for what's causing this, I think it's personally something server-side. I just got uh, got the feeling that it's something to do with that. But um, uh, obviously we've had, in fact, uh, have I mentioned this? The, the new, yeah, I think I have. The new server rotations and things. Obviously we had this update, it could be an issue there. For every single pl player, and just Alpha Squad, it either suggests a bug in the update, which I highly doubt, uh, since hopefully DICE had tested this thing to, well, high hell, and Sony should have done as well. Uh, I don't know what tests Sony would do, for instance, on the PS3, probably just actually checking that they're not including some code to go, lol, we want all your monies, or something daft. Um, but but still, you know, there's... Um, it seems strange that there's this bug, and I, I do doubt if it's in the client side of things. I suspect that there's perhaps an issue with the server side of things, who knows. Um, but a very, very strange issue indeed. All players in Alpha Squads, both teams, will be kicked randomly at some point during the game. And essentially, my public service announcement on this, I guess, is if you find yourself in Alpha Squad, for the love of goodness, switch as quick as you can. Um, yes, not, not a good situation whatsoever. And actually, that's another thing which, uh, again, I'm not quite so sure why DICE have done it, but previously, at least on, on console versions of Battlefield, uh, you had a choice of squads from Alpha to, I think it was either Golf or Hotel, something like that. You now only have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta, so four squads. Um, when one squad is basically unusable because the, the, the content gets booted out, you, uh, yeah, that's, that's not so good. And of course, if people don't know about it, they're going to join Alpha quite happily, and sure enough, they'll get booted. So not a good situation at all, and... Um, uh, uh, really a big downer uh, on the patch. I was hoping that the game would come out uh, with the patch, it would fix all the issues we've been having with USASs and balance and, and this kind of thing, and, uh, and, and fix all those problems, and I'm happy to say that it has, and that's great news in itself. Unfortunately, the, the bad news is that there are bugs, I guess, uh, in short, which which shouldn't be there, uh, um, you know, there's, there's no defending it uh, or denying it, but... Um, yeah, it's just put a bit of a taint on the whole situation. So I hope, with with all my heart, I guess, I don't know, that DICE, uh, that EA, whoever may be responsible, get to have the opportunity to have a good look at what's going on and get a quick fix out. I really do hope it's something server-side, because they can change that quite easily. They don't have to go through certification, but if it's something client-side, oh dear, not so good, not so good. So anyway, guys, 
the patch. It's an amazing patch, and it makes the game feel like something completely and utterly brand new. And to be honest, I haven't even scratched the surface of what has changed uh, in terms of bug fixes, changes. I mean, heck, I haven't even mentioned the uh, the fixing of the beep beep blo uh, beep beep bug. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if, if you don't know what that is, horns have been added to some vehicles, so you can uh, annoy everyone with constant horn use, beep, beep, and such. Um, you know, there's a lot to, to think about and digest uh, about this patch, but my initial impressions are it's a great patch. You know, it really reinvigorates the game. I think I said it right that time. It, you know, it makes the game fresh again, enjoyable, and there are so many changes, you know, that you can't really keep track of them all, but the whole package comes together really nicely. So I'd just like to take a second and thank DICE for, for the hard work they've been doing. You know, they've taken an awful lot of flack for the community, for the lack of communication and everything else. Uh, but what a lot of people don't get is, you know, it's not a simple case of just change some numbers. For every single change that they need to make to the game, they've got to make sure that that change doesn't break something else. And well, when you've got a game like Battlefield with Lord knows how many lines of code in it, that's going to take an awful long time to do. So I'm more than happy that they've taken their time with it and gotten the balance, the way that all the weapons and everything play out, uh, and, you know, the way they are, because the game feels fresh, it feels great, it feels new. It's very unfortunate that there's this bug and they've changed the squads for whatever reason, but, you know, it's it's one of those things. Um, software, I mean, strictly speaking, all, all features are bugs. It's just bugs that you want. But, um, yeah, certainly being booted out of Alpha Squad, an odd one, a very odd one indeed. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on the patch, and if you have any thoughts or questions actually, because obviously only the PS3 uh, users among us have the patch, by all means leave them down in the comments. More than happy to answer any questions, even, you know, the strangest mundane of things. Uh, so, so, yeah guys, any comments, by all means leave them down in the comments below. Now, for those of you expecting Challenge Chuggy today, my apologies, but um, I'm not going to lie, I've really struggled with it. And for those of you who don't know what Challenge Chuggy is, basically I have a little series on my channel here where basically I ask for a challenge from my lovely subscribers and viewers, and I try and well, beat it or do it. And here's a prime example of uh, the uh, anti-aircraft situation, let's say. So it was actually a havoc which took us out, but no time to react. You've got to be very quick and sharp. Anyway, digression. Um, so yeah, normally I upload Challenge Chuggy on a Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Uh, my challenge was to get five defibrillator kills. That's been quite the challenge. Anyway, <laughs> I hope to have something for you on Friday. Ooh, pardon me. Given the uh, the patch being released, I thought it'd be more important to talk about that to or this today, and you'll see that on Friday. Anyway, guys, I'm not sure if you just noticed, but there was a USAS-12 being beaten at close range. Huzzah! And we're coming to wrap this game up. So I fast-forwarded this little bit of footage just so we can get to the end. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Uh, but what you're about to see is... Actually, I don't know what this was. This was the game freezing and locking up. I don't know. Um... It's very strange uh, on the end, so you don't get to see the scoreboard. But thankfully, Battlelog came to the rescue, and, and this, by far and away, has been my best game ever. Not gonna lie, in terms of point score, in terms of the flying of the helicopter, this is the best flying I have ever done. So I was very, very pleased with my effort, and uh, well, hopefully you've enjoyed watching me get to that score, and, and well, my discussion of everything else going on, and also look at how many people in Alpha Squads which got booted. That's how bad it is. Uh, I think uh, 18 people were registered. That's that's an extra, you know, half a team. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, guys, thank you so very much for watching, as always. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the commentary. If you have any thoughts on the patch or any questions, by all means, leave them down in the comments below. And in fact, I did say I was going to speed this up. By the looks of it, I'm going to finish on time anyway. So, guys, if you have any comments or anything like that, please do leave them down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to look at anything. If you could leave a like, dislike, whatever you believe this video deserves, that'd be fantastic. And uh, if you want to see more videos from me, you can always subscribe. So, guys, I've been Chuggy, and I'll see you next time out on the battlefield.